So, um, remember, uh, last time we, were, we finished off with a couple of corollaries of the open value theorem, uh, one of which was this, that uh, if you have uh, x and y balance spaces, and you have um, t uh, going from x and y, a linear transformation, Surjective, then it was going to be an open mapping, right? And so uh, immediately you know that uh, if T is bijective, then the T inverse is continuous, right? Right. Uh, being injective and being bijective guarantees guarantees the existence of a like, inverse mapping. Um, being surjective, the, the sur surjective part of it guarantees that this thing is an open mapping. Right? That means that T maps open sets to open sets. But that means that T inverse has the property that um, the pre image of an open set here is an open set right here, and so it's continuous. Right? And so T inverse is continuous, and what that gives you is that, um, uh, and thus uh, there exists constants. Um, uh, is it, 
is it true that given any sequence of this form, uh, it arises as the Fourier coefficients of some The answer turns out to be uh, so you can't. Um, there will be some sequences that don't uh, that don't arise in this fashion. So um, the way we rephrase this uh, is to do the following: um, to we will rephrase it in a way that we can apply the mapping theorem to it uh, as follows. So. Uh, And let quantum space one um, be the space of all functions with the all norm. Uh, let quantum space number two be the set of sequences. Uh, uh, sequences of complex numbers where um, they go to zero as, as I just did. And you put um, you put on this with a suit form, so uh, with the suit form, the L infinity norm. Uh, you just take the supremum of, of all the epsilons. So um, it's an easy exercise. Uh, I think it's an easy exercise. I did it before. Um, it's an exercise, at least it's an exercise to see that this is a quantum space. I think it's an easy exercise. Yeah, it is an exercise. Um, it's easy to see that this is a quantum space. Um, and so our question is um, rephrased, right? The question becomes the same question, which is if we, if we let from B1 to B2 go from F to the uh, Fourier coefficients um, is T surjective. So now it begins to look um, like the question that we've, we've been, uh, a question sort of more familiar. So uh, here it is not T is not zero. Maybe it's more funny. You might just say no. It's more funny. So T 
T is continuous. Um, and uh, in fact, um, T is invariant. So this is just a fact from, from Fourier analysis that um, if uh, if all the Fourier coefficients are zero, then f is um, equal to zero. In so in fact, t is t is t is an injective. So I'm just going to invoke that fact. <coughs> Um, so now, uh, if further uh, t uh, were simply surjective, then t inverse would be t inverse would be continuous by the, by the corollary. Right? So t inverse would be a bounded function, a bounded up bounded map. Um, in other words. Uh, uh, we have something like this, um, the L1 norm of any, uh, if you take the L1 norm as a function, you take some L1 function, it's, it's norm would be bounded by the, it's norm would be bounded by the, um, uh, by, this, by the, by the soup norm of the Fourier coefficients, by the soup norm of the, actually by the of the, Fourier coefficients. Right. Uh, I'm just going to um, But we've actually seen a function where this fails. Um, but let F be the zero by kernel. Right? The zero by kernel, if you recall, is the sum of the D on an X. Well, you know, there's the big one, the big one, the big one, the big one. 
and then they said, is that all? And so he had to think of something on the spot um, to answer this question. Um, I, don't, I don't know what his answer was. And in fact, I don't even know the answer to this question. What you can say, what more you can say, can you say more than that? Um, you know, is, is that the only thing you know? Or is there more? Who knows? I don't. Okay, so um, yeah, go ahead. Right now, and then we'll, and then we'll switch back to you. Okay. If that's okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. So then from this you get that I is post. Um, and by the post graph theorem, you get that I is continuous, which is to say that I is bounded. And so we can bound I. Thank you. 
so far? Yeah. Um, yeah. So what's what is if this set D? This is it's a, it's a unit ball in C N. Oh. Mm -hmm. Another question. Yeah, so you have a unit ball in C N and you use those coordinates to create functions in F and L two. So that's just one. Is that you have an infinity in the definition of B you have an infinity, that should be a one. Where? Uh, in the third line. Uh, B mm -hmm. equals blah, blah blah blah, such that the norm is less than infinity. You want it to be oh, right? Yeah. Take the intersection of the um, the sets where this isn't true, which is going to be a measure zero set, and then um, for all x in x minus that set, this is going to be true for all x and for all c and d. Okay. Right. So, so then we have this, and then we claim that.
and then you let you see the f1x. That's the value of f1x once you get the value of that sigma. Fnx once you get the value of that sigma. Okay, then consider um, this. Okay, so if you consider Fc using the C, we get that the C is equal to 1 over sigma times f equals 1 to 10. So then this is going to be the square root of the sum of f i x plus n equal to a. So then you get Okay, almost done. Alright, so now that we have our thing, we can just integrate.
the space of the space in the power set of compact sets uh, becomes a complete metric space, becomes a complete metric space. So you consider the, the set of all compact sets uh, in R2. You say you put a, put a way, put, a, put this notion of distance on it. It turns out that this becomes a complete metric space. We will we'll prove this maybe um, next time. Okay. Um, another fact. Um, well, this is sort of a meaningless thing to say. Um, uh, yeah, actually, let me actually. I'll start off with a different fact next time. So next time, um, so what we're going to do. Um, uh, is, um, yeah, actually, okay, let me, actually, let me just stop, let me just stop. Okay, so just, um, just for right now, let's just say, okay, now we have this notion of, of Hausdorff, um, Hausdorff distance between spaces, okay, between sets. Okay. And then we'll start with this, and we'll use it to show that, that, um, that Vesica, which sets are actually generic. Okay, and that will be the last thing to do. Thanks, thanks, Anna, for, for doing that. Um, yeah. 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 Do you know if it's going to be cumulative? Uh, I think that would be that would be insane to have a cumulative exam uh, in this in this course. Um, so no, no, it's not going to be cumulative. It will be basically on the last uh, the last what we've done since then. But I think we haven't done that much since then. Let me think about it. Let me let me think about that. What, what's the last? I'm almost halfway into it saying that, you know, that that may may not be final at all. Let me let me let me think about it. Let me think about it. Because there hasn't because there hasn't really been that much material since the last. There's class on Tuesday, but no class on Thursday. So one more, one more class. That's it. Yeah. Um, so this is